na na one minute i want to know if i can be a philosopher this is like can i sit do you suffer what do you suffer from anything if you do you have a great chance to become a philosopher kind of like asking if anybody can be a singer you know some take that up as a profession and the others sing for themselves i think there are two ways to look at this one where a person takes up a course in philosophy and becomes a philosopher and the other where a person who is just generally curious about life has this natural sense of inquisitiveness and asks questions but anybody who asks questions cannot be a philosopher per se um the questions should be worth investigating the answers to such questions should make a positive impact if not on others lives at least on their life so i guess the quality of questions matter a lot and i remember an incident back in school uh you know apart from mundane questions like may i enter may i use the toilet me and the boys at least uh that i was with we ask before an examination what are the important questions ma'am important questions and once i happened to uh walk up to the teacher and i asked ma'am why are important questions important and she said because these questions are repeatedly asked in the examinations silence i just came back and i was reflecting on that i expected an answer where she'd say these questions are important because the answers to these questions and the topics are applied in these areas of life and you know so and so but I think I suffered philosophy even in my boyhood days. You see the point is the first question might help us to perform well in that examination and the second to perform well in life. So that's what I'm talking about. You know the German philosopher Arthur Schopenhauer I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right Schopenhauer ha 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 he said there are two kinds of philosophers academic philosophers and the genuine ones the genuine ones are puzzled by life and the academic philosophers are puzzled by books you know the genuine ones they cannot be settled with whatever they've been given uh, you know their lives are not built on only external uh, opinions they don't easily become blind believers you know now this doesn't mean that you don't study philosophy books and other philosophical thoughts and say that you're completely a self-made philosopher no uh, i think it's a mix of both uh, but what is more important is to have this sense of seeking uh, this natural tendency to seek because that is what great men of have, have in common they were genuinely puzzled by life if we look at it this way at a time in history when the first philosopher came on earth what books did he read the question should be should everybody be a philosopher and my answer would be yes but not in the sense that you do that full time but at least a freelance philosopher besides isn't that the only thing that separates us from animals but being humans isn't the only eligibility i guess i think you have to suffer you know because our lives are always swinging between the dualities of life you know good bad peace distress happy sad you know a person who's always happy there's none but if he's happy you don't find him asking why am i happy but when it is when there's a dark side of it and then suddenly you find him asking questions to life you know why why me how and all that and life would listen to you and then say what now we're talking the philosopher's way so i think it is best to upgrade our perception by asking important questions in life as early in life as possible especially at a time like this when the whole world is in a lockdown so i'm glad you did that now is the best time <laughs>